In this video, we're going to continue modeling out this pea shooter, and we're going to focus largely on strategies of how to handle this mouth area. Now, when you work in Maya, um, I strongly recommend, obviously, you save multiple files um, out, iter save iteratively. In fact, I'm going to save right now. Save. As well as making copies of things as you go, um, in case you make, make mistakes. So I, I commonly will make copies of things. Granted, this is only a queue, but I'm still going to make a copy of it just to, to practice what I teach here. Um, in case I don't like something that I did, that I can back up to it throw out what I messed up on and just bring this back. So it's just a way to get back to it. Um, and you obviously, I mean, you can, there's nothing wrong with having things lying around in your scene. But if you want to do this method, again, I strongly encourage making copies of things. So um, um, I would suggest this. But again, if you don't like things lying around your scene, what you can do is you can hide them in your outliner. So the outliner, if you don't have it open, it's this little, um, uh, graph looking icon right here on the bottom left of the tool of the toolbox you can um, you can um, turn this on and off by just clicking here and this is the the graph um, shows the sorry the, the outline list of all the things in your scene so um, you can select objects through here and if you want to hide something um, you can hide something in this window, but it'll still be in the outline, and that's why I recommend having this open. Um, so if I select an object in here and I hit Control H, or you can come up Display, I think it's on Display, Hide, Hide Selection, Control H, Control H to hide, it hides the object in here, but it does keep it in here in the outliner. If I want to bring it back, I select the object in the outliner and I hit Shift H, and it brings it back. Granted. Just as I showed you how with the visibility on the layers, you could also put this stuff in, into layers. I don't generally do that, um, but you could do that as well. All right. So with hiding objects and showing objects now revealed to you guys, um, it's you should be making copies of things as you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm not this again. I mentioned how this is not the best image plane reference because it's kind of got this angle thing going on here. And you generally want to try to model things orthogonally as much as possible until you're ready to finalize them. Um, just, it just makes things easier. So I'm going to actually model this uh, character. And I'm just going to go in a direction. It doesn't matter which direction you go, but I'm going to go in a direction. In this case, I'm probably going to go in the X direction this way. So I'm going to try to make this snout thing. And I'm, gonna, I'm already moving away from my image plane reference. I'm going to have to just refer back to this and then kind of um, use this more as a reference image than, than an actual image plane. So now might be a good time to bring it back so I can see it in all the views. In fact, you know what? Let's do that now. Go ahead and turn this on. Click that. Go back to the attribute editor and all views. And push back just a little bit more. Go back to the channel box and then turn back on the template or the reference. There we go. So it's back on reference. And I can look at that while I model. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this face here. And we're going to talk about um, how to use smooth previewing to kind of get these shapes. So, for example, um, we talked about this. Um, let, me, let, me make, let me break this on purpose first. There we go. So we talked about this um, when we talked about the uh, the last last video with if you have um, something smooth preview, um, you can see what it looks like. But most students get uh, bamboozled by the fact that if I add more divisions, there's more divisions for it to be rounder, and that's actually the exact opposite. So if I you saw me add divisions using the multi cut tool, and if I smooth preview this now, it's actually less round. So you can see before. It was rounder than it was now because what it's doing is it's it's now only taking the the, the center area uh, if you like drop imagine halfway and going to other half so it's it's basically cutting this half and that's a little confusing but as opposed to where before it was drawing all the way from this point to this point all the way around now it has less dist it has less distance to make that curve. So therefore, it's sharper. 
So the more geometry you have, the sharper it will be. I'm going to undo back until those points are gone. Um, and you can use this to your advantage too, we will. But just know that the more divisions you have, the less round it will be. So alright, so I'm going to go ahead and select this face, turn on smooth select, and I'm going to extrude this doing control E. And immediately this side's going to flatten way out. Because right off the bat, the extrude tool is, is the same size as the other face, which looks a little weird. So I'm just going to scale this in. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this at the, at the moment. And I'm going to hit control E to repeat my extrude. I lost my face. One second. Control E. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is maybe I'll come uh, a little bit out. Control E again. And what I think I might do is start, start scaling this back up. Now, I don't particularly like what I did, but the great thing is um, we can we can come back and refine this quite easily because we don't have much geometry actually here. But first, I'm going to go ahead and continue my extrudes. There's at least a few more. I'm going to do Control E again to make another extrude. You can already kind of see it come together. It's way too big. And then uh, maybe scale this down a little bit. All right, let's see what this looks like. So that's what it looks like not smooth preview. Again, that's what it looks like smooth preview with the two key. So maybe in, in this case, it might be easier to manipulate this in the two key. So hit the edge, get grab these edges. Maybe go back to one, actually. One and two. You can see I can move back and forth between my one, two, and three keys. Or just down the three key, here's call. And kind of get these. Can move this back. Let me see. I'm just going to select this face. And again, all I'm doing here is I'm looking at the geometry and changing it. And I think this overall is too big. But that's okay. I'm going to kind of, what I'm more concerned about is kind of getting this round form out. And I think it's too soft. So, what you can do if you want to kind of tighten it up is you can try inserting an edge loop. So, Control Shift X to enter your multi cut. And it's because I already have the geometry out there. I don't want to extrude it because I already have it out here. So Control Shift X. Oops. Control Shift S. Control Shift X. Hold down Control. And the reason it looks like a square is because technically the geometry is a square. It's just we're smooth previewing it. I'm not sure exactly where I want to add it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, put it in there. And you can see now I can come in here, maybe actually select it and scale it up and change it. Control Shift X. I'm going to try one over here. Hold on Control. That looks way too big. Um, so let's go ahead and scale that down and scale this face down. Let's bring this face in. And I think this whole face area is probably too big. So we can see, we come in here and get them just switching back and forth between the one and three key, or maybe I'll just select all of these faces. Three key, and it's a lot easier to grab those faces because, um, because we have you know it's just only a few few of them, and if you don't like something, again, you can see I don't like this one. If I don't like it, I can select it and Control Delete to get rid of it. So like I said, I can I can manipulate this a lot easier because there's a lot less geometry to mess with. And then now it's just kind of, I'm just kind of playing with it. And I don't know exactly how big I want this to be, to be completely honest. I think I'm going to add a division here, tighten it up in this area. Let me, sometimes it's easier to go back and forth. There we go. I'm going to shrink this down. And I'm going to do Control E to extrude. Take this in a little bit. Control E again. I think I'm going to come to here, scale it a little, in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, a little trick here, I'm going to control E and just scale it a little bit. I think I missed my keyboard. Yes, I did. Control E. And what the last part of this trick is, what you want, again, is you want it to be tightened. I think I messed up somewhere.
is if you insert an edge loop right around this edge, it'll also tighten it up. I can't get to it though, because I can't see it. There it is. As you can see, it's a lot tighter. I think that's too big, personally, but it's a nice start. And I think that's too big of a hole. So again, this is what we're kind of talking about here, is if we wanted to keep these things um, the same, we could try doing that move tool again, where we grab the normals and do that. That might work. Probably would work. So let's just try it out. Um, there's an, another way I do this personally, but let's go ahead and try the move one, just to try and see if it works out in this case. Always, you know, best way to learn is to try new things. Tool settings here. Switch this to normal. And in. And it's just going to thin up the shapes. I didn't think that would work. So I'm going to reset this. In this picker case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select this one face right here. And what I want is I do want all those faces I had. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that one face because it's easier. And if you use shift period or shift comma on your keyboard, you can grow or um, shrink a selection. So shift period will grow a selection. Zoom out a little bit. You see me growing the selection. There you go. You see it being grown. And now what I can do is I can scale this down, the whole thing down. Maybe move it back some. Like I said, I'm thinking like key parts of this need to be scaled. Now I'm just playing. Like I have to select these loops and kind of tweak this. And that's what the advantage of doing this on on um, on uh, with the, uh, the the smooth previews is it doesn't take much geometry to do this. I can easily do this with less a lot less geometry. And that's far easier than having this be a, a massive um, a massive amount of geometry. I mean, if you were to do this with a cylinder and try to keep it round and then get the, these forms, it would probably take you a bit longer to do it. You could do it. It can be done. Not, not that it can't be done. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. So, again, it's close enough. I mean, I think, honestly, you know, it should nudge in more. Um, it should probably have maybe more of a taper um, if you want to do that. But now we're getting, I'd have to look at other reference, really, to kind of kind of judge that. You know, I don't know if it tapers like this more. Um, I really need to look at other reference to get that. So, I mean, this is good for the purpose of the demo, I think, um, getting that out. Uh, maybe I'll shrink a little, little bit more, just a little bit more, and a little bit more back, like that. Come in here and mess with these faces a little bit. Maybe bring this up a bit, a little bit more. Let's look at my reference off in this view. And you can kind of see, just kind of now using it more for reference than an image plane. But you can kind of see I'm getting getting there. Just plane, maybe round this out some more by pulling this a bit. There we go, like that. Got right, a little bit more round, scale this up. We taper this back down, scaling it. So a little more tubular. That looks pretty good. So again, just kind of tweaking the shapes. And again, this was a simple cube with a with the what a, a extrusion. And, you know, a couple extrusions on on the edge of it. So I mean, we can really get some great results by, by this technique. And again, it's by no means the only technique. So if you don't really like this technique, I mean, you totally you know, there's 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 other ones that will come during the course of the class that you can also try as well. Okay, so uh, let's do one more thing here. Um, I think we could do this bottom part here. Uh, I, you know, you probably do that as maybe as a bottom of sphere. I think I'm going to do it as a torus, you know, donut, polygon primitive torus. Real quick here. I just kind of move it in here. I'm just, I'm just eyeballing this once again. Again, I'm already moving away from my image plane reference, but, you know, something like that maybe. Again, I'm just tapping the space bar. You gotta be always tapping that space bar. Be a digital shark. Move around, move around your scene. And if you want, play with your, your inputs at the creation of this to get this a little bit closer to what you want. And you know, maybe something like that. Again, I'm just eyeballing this at this point. I think that looks pretty good from the 3D 
Um, it looks like it could be a little thicker, actually. So there we go. It looks like it still still could be thicker. Um, so maybe go even thicker, and then maybe try 0.6 and 0 0.5. Uh, I don't like that. Actually, I don't mind the 0.5. Let's just do the radius of 0.55. 0.5. I don't know. I don't like that. I don't know. I don't like that. So it's kind of that donut, kind of, kind of going in thing, but bigger. Um, if you're talking about video games, um, you don't need. You can delete. I mean, technically, you can delete these faces up here. I'm not going to yet. I'm not at the point where I want to even go and, and bother with that. Same with the bottom here. Like we don't need to keep these bottom faces here or these these faces in here if they are not going to be seen. But um, just wait on that to like the later. Um, so until you're you're absolutely sure you don't need them anymore. All right. So in the next video, uh, we're going to talk about the lease. So until then, uh, see you next time.